Okay, so what do we have here? Well, obviously we have a triangle, and to be more specific about it, we have a right triangle. In other words, this angle right here is 90 degrees. We also know that this angle of the triangle is 17 degrees, and the hypotenuse is 12 uh, units long. So the goal is to find the area of this triangle. Now, do we have enough information to find the area? Well, not yet, but this information right here will be enough information to find these missing pieces of the puzzle so you can actually calculate the area. Now, I'm kind of speaking vaguely here because I want to give you a full opportunity to solve this problem all on your own. So if you think you can figure this thing out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm actually going to show you the correct answer in just one second, and then we're going to go ahead and apply some knowledge about triangles, and I will give you a little bit of a hint uh, and some basic trigonometry. So you're going to have to use a little bit of trigonometry to solve this problem, but this is not going to be that difficult. Anyways, before we get started, though, I'm going to go ahead and quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I have been teaching math for decades. It is my true passion to help as many people as I possibly can learn mathematics. And I'm going to tell you right now, all of you could be successful in math. And I'm especially speaking to those of you that struggle in math. Please do not give up. The key to learning math is actually finding someone to teach you math where you understand what's going on, i.e. you need great math instruction. If you're stuck in a classroom, okay, and you totally are confused all the time, or if you're trying to learn from a book and you totally don't understand what's going on, you are not learning, okay? The way I like to teach math is to explain things in an easy to understand way so anyone and everyone can understand what's going on without watering down what you need to know. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of special test that you're studying for that has math on it, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, maybe a teacher certification exam, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave links to my math notes in the description as well. You absolutely need a great pair of math notes to study from. You should be taking your own, but if your notes are so-so, start improving them, but you can use my notes in the meantime. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the area of this triangle, and then of course I'm gonna to explain to you how we got that area, or how I got that area. So the area would be approximately 20.127 units squared. So notice here, I don't know what units um, we're dealing with, right? So I'm given 12 as the length of this hypotenuse, but we don't have uh, like, you know, a particular unit of measure like 12 millimeters or centimeter or feet, but we, uh, you know, are talking about area. So anytime, you know, you're given a problem about area or volume and you're not given any specific units, you should put in uh units squared, all right? If you just put 20.127, that's fine. But just remember, uh, units of measure are very, very important. But if you got something close to this, because you know there is a little bit of rounding going on, well, then that is excellent. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and give you a nice little happy face, MA plus, a 100%, and a few stars. So you can tell your friends and family that you were able to find the area of a triangle today with just some angle information and hypotenuse information and trigonometry, pretty cool stuff. Now, uh, there are a couple different formulas that come to mind that are beyond the scope of what I wanna talk about in this particular video because what I wanna talk about here is just an illustration of what we call basic right angle trigonometry, okay? Now, the goal here is to find the area of this triangle. Now, here, all we have is the angle and we have the hypotenuse, but what do we need to find the area of this triangle? Well, we're gonna need the height and the base because the formula for the area of a triangle is area is equal to one half base times height, right? So this would be the base of the triangle and this would be the height. We don't have either pieces of this information, so we're gonna to have to get these pieces of information, uh, these dimensions of the triangle to actually calculate the area. So how can we do that? Well, again, we're gonna to have to use some basic right angle trigonometry. 
Now, if you're not familiar with basic trigonometry, I have additional videos on my YouTube channel that cover the basics, but I'm gonna uh, point you towards probably my geometry course. Uh, so my full geometry course, you can find it at my Math Help program. I do kind of introduce trigonometry, right angle trigonometry. Uh, of course, if you happen to be taking more advanced trigonometry, you might wanna check out like my pre-calculus course, but uh, for most of you, that's gonna be too advanced for what we need to know. So we're just talking about basic right angle trigonometry, what we call trigonometric functions. And we're talking about these things here on your calculator, the sine button, the cosine button, and the tangent button. These are what we call trigonometric functions or trigonometric ratios. So, you know, again, this is, um, you know, it could be, you know, turned into like a full lesson on this, but we're not gonna do that. I'm just gonna teach you what you need to know to solve this problem. So what we have to keep in mind is that we have three options here. I should have erased that, sine, cosine, and tangent. So we can use sine, cosine, or tangent to figure out some of this information. Now, in this particular problem, we can't use the tangent. So we need to think about this phrase here, so ka toa. Now, this one has to deal with the sine, this has to deal with the cosine, and this has to deal with the tangent. So I'll show you how this works right now. So so ka toa is just a little memory aid a mnemonic to remember the, the different ratios we're talking about. So here we have a triangle, a right triangle, and we need to look at this angle, okay, right here. So what is the angle opposite, or sorry, what is the side opposite of this angle? Well, the side opposite of this angle is this side. So we're gonna label it O, okay, for opposite. Now, what is the side right next to the angle right here? that is uh, what we call the adjacent side. So we're gonna label that A. And then this longest side of a right triangle is always what we call the hypotenuse. Now, of course, we actually know the actual value of, of the hypotenuse in this particular problem. I just need you to understand that is the H or the hypotenuse. So any right triangle and an angle, okay, when we're talking about trigonometric ratios, you're gonna have an opposite side, an adjacent side, and the hypotenuse, right? Again, we're talking about basic right angle trigonometry. So the sine is this little so. So what we're talking about is the sine is opposite over the hypotenuse. This is just our little memory aid. So the sine of 17 degrees will be the opposite over the hypotenuse. Now, I want to involve the hypotenuse here. I want the H information because I actually have a value for it, all right? So I don't know O and I don't know A, but I do know H. So because I know at least one of these values, I can either use the sine or the cosine because both of the uh, both the sine and the cosine involve the hypotenuse. The tangent does not. That's the opposite over the adjacent. So I wouldn't want to use the tangent because it's, I, I can't discern anything from it in this particular problem. Okay, so the sine is the opposite. Let me go ahead and erase all this here so we can kind of focus in on what's going on. Okay, so I just want to show you how I'm setting up this problem here uh, because this is obviously going to be the key to solving this. All right, so the sine is opposite over the hypotenuse. We talked about that. So the sine of 17 degrees, this is the way I would write this, the sine of 17 degrees is opposite over the hypotenuse O over H. Now, I don't know what O is, okay, but I want to solve for it, okay, because this is going to be the height of my triangle. I need that. That's why I'm, um, I'm solving for this length right here, which is my O. So that's going to be O over H. H is the hypotenuse. It's 12. So sine 17 degrees is equal to O divided by 12. All right. So um, now that we have that, how do we actually uh, solve for this unknown, this O here? That's not zero. I could put another variable in here, but I'm just leaving that as the opposite side. Well, you just want to think of this as a basic uh, proportion. So in our calculator, to solve this proportion, all we need to do is just cross multiply. So O times one, and I'll just put that as an opposite, that opposite side right here, this length right here, this variable is gonna be equal to 12 times sine of 17. So sine of 17 degrees times 12 is gonna be the answer. So in your calculator, uh, you could do this one or two ways. I would actually type in sine 17 degrees and actually just hit the sign button, put in uh, one seven, make sure your calculator is in DEG mode. And then you can hit times 12. And if you did this correctly, 
you're going to get a decimal around 3.508. I'm just kind of rounding off. So the opposite side, this side right here, is around 3.508. Okay, so that's an illustration to um, use basic right angle trigonometry to solve this right triangle. Now, what I could do now is I could use the tangent or I could use the cosine to find this side, this adjacent side. That would be my base, and I would have enough information to find the area. But you have another option here. Okay, so I just solved for the opposite side right here. It's 3.508. I have the hypotenuse, and we uh, uh, do have a right triangle here. So you could uh, use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for A. And uh, you can see here that actually using the Pythagorean theorem, that's perfectly fine. But sometimes that requires a, even a little bit more work than actually using some basic trigonometry. But let's go ahead and uh, solve for that missing side using the Pythagorean theorem. So it's going to be this squared, this side squared, plus this side squared is going to be equal to the longest side or the hypotenuse squared. Remember, and, uh, when we're using the Pythagorean theorem, C is always the hypotenuse. A and B are these other sides. Okay, so A squared plus B squared, we can call this one B, uh, and uh, that value is 3.508 squared is going to be equal to c squared. Again, c is always the hypotenuse. In this case, it's going to be 12 squared. So let's go ahead and just do the number crunching here. So a squared plus 3.508 squared is uh, 12.306. Again, that's just 3.508 times itself. And that's going to be equal to 12 squared or 12 times 12, which is 144. Now I'm going to subtract that uh, 12.306 from both sides. Again, be, uh, you should be using your calculator to help you out with this uh, number crunching. You're going to get A squared is equal to 131.694. To solve for A, we need to just go ahead and take the square root of both sides. So A is going to be equal to approximately 11.475. Uh, Actually, I should change this little... Uh, symbol right there because we're just kind of a rounding off. Okay, actually, I'm not sure if um, I don't have my calculator in front of me. I'm not sure if I did round off or not. But anyways, let's just call it approximately 11.475. So now we uh, have our full triangle right now. All right, so we got this side, we have this side, and we have this side. Again, uh, we were only given the angle and the hypotenuse, so we needed uh, to use basic right angle trigonometry, either sine or cosine to find one of these lengths right here. Okay, so either this length or this length, the base or the height of this triangle, we needed trigonometry. Uh, but once we had one, uh, we had two sides of the right triangle, then we can either use trigonometry or the Pythagorean theorem to get all sides. So now we're ready to go ahead and calculate the area. So the area is equal to one half base times the height. The base right here is 11.475, or 1 half, times 11.475, times the height of 3.508. And when we do all this lovely number crunching, again, use your calculator. Uh, we're going to take this times this, and divide that by 2. We're going to get 20.127 uh, approximately, and that, that is going to be the area. And again, don't forget that because we're talking about area, we are talking about units squared. Right? That's just a reminder that... When it comes to length, uh, area, surface area, volume, you do have to put in those units of measure. Uh, oftentimes, students forget to put in those units of measure, and they do get dock points on exams, quizzes, tests, etc. So that's why I'm kind of emphasizing that. All right, so hopefully, you know, you didn't find this problem too difficult. Now, again, this would be probably an appropriate uh, type of problem for those of you that are maybe taking like high school level geometry. But if you haven't had trigonometry, you know, uh, yet, basically the way it works is you first learn this real basic trig, uh, this basic trigonometry that I kind of showed you right here, right angle trigonometry. And then as you advance into uh, courses like pre-calculus, you get into like much more advanced trigonometry. Anyways, if you need help with any of this stuff, just go to my website, pick on the re whatever respective course they happen to be in. Again, trigonometry, you're going to find that in my geometry course and my pre-calculus course. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.